Hey guys, what's going on? Today we are talking about what to kick, how to counter, what to reflect, what to look out for against two classes in this video. The first one is Shadow Priest and the second one will be Warlock, right, in this video. And we're going to kind of go over every single class over a number of videos, um, specifically casters and healers, and then, you know, move on to the melee specs as well. So when we look at... Uh, I guess warlocks and SPs, it's kind of confusing what we need to look out for, especially for a new player, right? Um, and what I've done, I've thought about the best way to explain this. And while, you know, I could spend a whole bunch of time um, pulling footage of, I guess, gameplay against SPs and stuff like that and, and talk about that, um, that's probably what I'll probably do in more of the advanced video um, where I kind of bring this all together. But this is like the really, really basic look about how these classes work, what you need to look out for as a warrior in particular, and generally as a melee DPS or even a caster if you're new to the game, right? So Shadow Priest, uh, essentially they have their, their dots, they've got their Vampiric Touch, Devouring Plague, um, and Devouring Plague is obviously sort of their cooldown that they use. Not cooldown, but they, they are sort of limited in a way on how much they can put this out. Um, due to the fact that it costs insanity, right? And insanity is generated through your dots, is generated through, um, where's, the, where's the little button there? Mind Flays, yeah, I think it's generated through Mind Blast. Pretty much all your, all your damage abilities as a Shadow Priest generate insanity. When you are at maximum insanity, um, you can put two Devouring Plagues out on two different targets and, you know, it costs 50 insanity to do a Devouring Plague. So there's a number of things that as a warrior you're, you're really looking out for against Shadow Priests, right? And this is very dependent on the comp that you're playing. But the first thing you're, you're trying to see is whether you can kick them on Shadow, right? Kicking a Shadow Priest on Shadow essentially locks him out of all his important defensive spells as well as of his offensive spells, right? So you can see he only has a single tree here which is Shadow, and then above here there is other spells you can use that aren't um, on the on the Shadow Tree, but I think even these are like, while these are general priest abilities, you're still locked out of them. Um, I think you can Power Word, Shield, Desperate Prayer probably, um, and maybe use a couple of other minor abilities, uh, but generally, you know, it's not going to make a huge difference. You're not going to be able to use your Dispersion or your Fade, um, which are the two abilities that I think, you know, keep Shadow Priests alive the most, right? So let's do a line by line of what the abilities do. So when you see them in Arena, you're not super confused. Desperate Prayer is essentially like uh, Last Stand as a prop, prop warrior, right? Um, it gives you 25% health, extra health, right? Like a rally, and then it heals you for that amount. So this is sort of a minor sort of cooldown, as in it's probably not going to save you if you're already dead, like your your healer's in a 8 second poly and there's no trinket. But as a, as a Shadow Priest or as a warrior looking at this, um, you can sort of see that if they use this, their health spikes up. It's probably because they've used this cooldown Desperate Prayer, right? Um, the other thing to look out for here is obviously they have this purge. So they can purge your healer, they can purge you of all your dots, and that costs them mana, right? And I think it's roughly about 9 or 9% 9 mana. Um, you know, stand corrected, but generally I think with most bars you get about 9 or 10 dispels um, before you're completely oom. And while Insanity is the main generator on a Shadow Priest, you should also consider the fact that eventually if they keep spamming their mana, um, they won't be able to do things like Master Spell, right? Um, they won't be able to do things like Power Word Shield um, and even Shadow Mend. Uh, which I think might be over here, right? Costs 423 mana, which scales up, obviously, as you have a higher mana pool on a level 60. Um, I made all these on class trials for the classes I don't have. And, you know, if you're really not understanding how a class works, I highly recommend you do this. It's completely free, and you can just have a look at how all these different abilities and talents actually work. You can go hit the training dummies, stuff like that. So moving on to the next important thing to consider is Master Spell, right? This is something that's really, really important for you to stop if you are versing... Sorry, if you're playing something like Warrior Mage Paladin, right? Because if you're... Sorry, if you 
like get a hodge or a poly on the enemy healer and the shadow priest is able to get a master spell um he can effectively make that poly or hodge you know only last for 1.3 seconds and as you verse higher and higher cr uh priests they'll be able to master spell much faster as well they can do this every 45 seconds so it's similar to sank on a rep paladin um, which removes them from a form of stun or fear right so definitely something you need to to think about especially if you are looking um, at playing something like WMP or even with a Paladin generally, right? Because the Hodge is important for it to stay and Master Spell completely negates it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about the actual strategies against Shadow Priests. Um, going through their spells, essentially they ramp, um, I guess, Vampiric Touches um, on different people, right? They put their dots out, which helps them generate insanity. Um, if you'll notice, the first VT I do, I cast, right? But then the second one, I can instantly reapply every 15 seconds for free. So the Vampiric Touch, essentially, if you kick it at the start of the game, um, they're unable to get this unfurling darkness out and get their dots out on everyone, right? So it is a pretty big deal if you can stop that. What you'll see a lot of priests doing is, you know, while you're running in, they'll probably try and cast a VT on you, um, which is, you know, you could, you could go and reflect that, but you might want to hold reflect for other abilities depending on how how much trouble you're in right um so if we keep going down into this tree uh, we see their major offensive so if you see devouring plagues on you or your healer right um that means the shadow priest is starting a go right um it means that there's probably going to be higher damage than normal coming out and moreover if you see the shadow fiend you see the devouring plague and the void eruption right which is a cast time sometimes if you PvP talent it, you're going to take a whole bunch of damage because this is essentially their burst rotation, right? Um, and obviously, because it's a level 48, you don't get to see the mind games, but the mind games is linked in with this as well, where that's also in that damage rotation. So if we keep going down, we have Dispersion. Dispersion uh, essentially makes the Shadow Priest, I guess, like a wall almost, right? But you can't slow them. Um, you can stun them, right, when they disperse, if you need to lock them down and they're still really low. Uh, but what will often happen is Shadow Priest can run this thing, uh, Intangibility, which means they get healed 50% of their health. And Dispersion has a 30 second less cooldown, so it goes from 2 minutes to 1.5 minutes, which almost all Priests will run, right? Um, this is a really important thing to note, because while you, they might disperse at 10%, um, they're not going to end at 10%. Uh, you will have your Moral Strike and your Sharpen maybe sometimes on them, which will reduce how much they get healed. Um, but, you know, it's probably a wise idea to swap once they've dispersed and then hit them after they disperse. And that dispersion sort of looks like this, which I'm sure all of you guys have seen before. The other thing to think about is Greater Fade. Greater Fade lasts 4 seconds and essentially makes everything miss you. Um, it's a PvP town, which all of them will run. And often what you'll find is, you know, they can use Greater Fade to run out of your spears. Um, they can Greater Fade all of your damage, your AoE, your Blade Storms. It doesn't really matter what it is, right? Um, and it looks sort of like this, where you'll pop out and you'll be sort of like, they'll look a bit like Translucent for a second. This is a really, really important ability to track and look for. Because effectively, if you throw a stun out and you get the Shadow Priest to like 60 or 50% HP, and they press Greater Fade immediately afterwards, uh, their healer is probably going to be able to top them, you're not going to really be able to finish them off, and you're going to put a lot of bursts, like, let's say you Colossal Smash, right, which lasts, I think, 10 seconds or something, right? I'm not sure the exact number. Um, after your Storm Bolt, there's still 7 seconds of Colossal Smash on them, and if they fade 4 seconds of it, you're only getting, like, 3 seconds of uptime on them. Moreover, uh, they do end up moving a little bit faster with this Greater Fade. It increases their movement speed by 50%, right? So you'll see them sort of running and they can kite you really, really easily like this, right? So really, really important to take note of if they've got Fade up, don't commit any damage or buttons on them. If you still want to stick to the SP, you can kind of chase after him. But you don't want to be using your charges or your leaps until the Fade is over because you don't know how far away they're going to be. Um, these are the main damage abilities, right? They've got the Psychic Horror on a 45 second cooldown. So if you have Omnibar, you should track that. 
and they have uh, their silence here on a 45 second cooldown. So often a go for a Shadow Priest will be, you know, stun and then silence your healer. So if you're running Overwatch and you see that stun being used and maybe the last one or two seconds, they'll probably throw the silence over it, right? So really, really important to look at and make sure that you're avoiding, um, you know, maybe you, you try and avoid them when they stun silence your healer so they can't connect and get their damage off, right? There's the idea that Shadow Priests are like dock classes that, you know, they can do all their damage behind a pillar, but ultimately the majority of the Shadow Priest kit actually requires them to connect to you in some shape or form. Um, you know, the mind games, the void bolts, uh, the devouring plagues and stuff like that, their actual dot damage isn't as high as something like Aflox, right? Um, where, but the really, really scary part is when they connect with all these buttons and they're throwing their instant mind blasts at you, mind flaying you, getting their devouring plays and stun silence fearing your healer, right? So really, really look out for that. Um, the other thing to note is the Shadow Fiend, right? We talked about that before, but this guy actually does a fair bit of damage when he's pumping. He attacks very, very quickly. Um, and he generates the Shadow Priest insanity as he goes at it. So if you see this being used and the Void Eruption, right, which is over here, right? Void Eruption is essentially that big cooldown. It does a bit of AoE, but it also gives in this thing called Void Bolt, um, which extends the duration of VT and is just an extra added, um, I guess, single target damage. And it generates them more insanity so they can do more Devouring Plagues, right? It all sort of syncs up at the end of it, you know? If we look at something like VE, so VE essentially gives, um, you know, heals to the targets around you. So you heal a nearby ally for 85% of the, the dots that you're doing. Um, and also I think the single target shadow spell damage, right? So the void bolts, uh, the deaths, mind flays, all this kind of stuff. That really, really adds up and adds a pretty big substantial heal to your entire team so if you see this being used you know you might want to reconsider doing a go there and if you feel like the shadow priest isn't dying it's probably because this is up at that moment um, and then finally i wanted to talk a little bit about the talents right so obviously they get this when they cast vt their second vt is instant and applies the shadow of pain because of misery right psychic horror is something they talent sometimes they might run mind bomb which replaces their mind which replaces their psychic scream with this disorient right which is placed on your healer and usually they're silenced so this mind bomb sticks the entire way and the shadow priest can still say very very far away so look out for that if you're versing your shadow priest the shadow crash is just that little dot but damnation is the thing you should be looking for right which adds uh, shadow web pain vampiric touch and devouring play to a target instantly right and then after you do that, you can instantly cast your Vampiric Touch on the other target. Um, this is something to, to really watch out for. Um, and you can they can keep sort of extending uh, the Devouring Plague, you know, if they can gain more and more sanity. So a lot of uh, Shadow Priests will stack up until they can do three Devouring Plagues stacked into one on their healer, which does a lot on your healer, which does a lot of damage, especially if you don't have a dispel. Um, so, uh, in terms of the general playstyle against Shadow Priests, if you are looking to burst them down and you want to sort of avoid having to deal with Dispersion and Greater Fade, um, you should sort of try and look to get something off the kick, right? If they get kicked on Vampiric Touch, they're essentially locked out of all their defensive abilities and sort of have to eat the damage. So if you watch higher rated streamers, you'll say, I counterspelled the Shadow Priest, let's blow him up. Um, counter spell obviously lasts six seconds, so it's the equivalent of locking the Shadow Priest out of all his defensives for six seconds, which is, you know, pretty easy to burst through. And it'll force cooldowns from the enemy healer because the Shadow Priest can't respond with Disperse and he can't respond with Fade, right? The things to watch out for is sometimes you might kick the VT, right, with a pummel, but they're, they're kind of baiting out this kick, right, so that they know that the next go your paladin comes in and their healer's hodged and they get the VT off on that hodge. Sorry, the, the master spell off on the hodge like that, right? Which makes it really, really hard for you to get pressure because you can't get CC. Uh, the other thing to take note of is looking at what damage cooldowns they're using, specifically devouring plagues. If your whole team has devouring plagues, you're gonna take a lot of damage. 
if they try and cast this Void Eruption or you see them kind of look like this, that you're going to take more damage. If you see the Shadow Fiend as well, you're going to be taking a lot of damage. So these are the kind of main things to watch out for in terms of Shadow Priests, in my opinion, right? The other final thing would be uh, Mind Control. So you might see Mind Control being put on a teammate. If you if you have any teammates like an Enhancement Shaman or Shamans of any kind, um, other Shadow Priests or other Priests, um, you know, hunters, all this kind of stuff that have an offensive purge. If they MC one of your teammates, you can purge, like your teammate can purge you and that'll remove the MC off them. So that's something to, to take note of as a Shadow Priest. But overall, I feel like uh, Shadow Priests have a really hard time against good Warriors. Um, I feel like Warriors are sort of, Warriors and Windwalkers are, are very strong into Shadow Priests. So understanding their toolkit is important and you know, understanding when they're using the defensives and sort of holding your offensive cooldowns for that is also important. So have a look at this. If anything here didn't really make sense, I highly recommend you to go and check out, you know, a Shadow Priest streamer um, or even just make a class trial yourself and give it a go if Shadow Priests are giving you a hard time. All right, let's look at Affliction Warlocks. Okay, guys, we're going to look at two types of Warlocks here, right? We're going to look at the Destruction and Affliction Warlocks, right? Um, we're going to do this a bit faster because I realized how long I spent on Shadow Priests, but hopefully this is useful to you guys. So, uh, effectively, what Destruction Warlocks try and do is they try and get this spell, Chaos Bolt, on you, right? And obviously, when that spell hits, I'm on a level 50, it's doing, you know, a huge amount of damage. The thing you really are looking out for is when they're Chaos Bolting you, with the Infernal and the Dark Soul up, right? Because that means they're going to do way more damage with those uh, Chaos Bolt hits. So to understand Affliction, uh, to, sorry, to understand Destruction Warlocks, you sort of need to understand what their kit is and how they work, right? So generally, right, when they immolate and they incinerate or conflagrate these instant cast fire abilities, right, that you'll see them do a lot, Cataclysm as well, um, which is that spell when they do that big circle, they will generate these things called shoal shards, right? And shoal shards, soul shards. Soul shards enable another resource for their chaos bolt, which is really their big damage pumper, right? When you see these two being casted on an enemy target from far away, right, or someone on your team, you have to be scared because they go quite slowly as well, so you don't really, it's kind of hard to respond quickly to what happens. So, what tends to happen a lot of the times against Warlocks when I see newer Warriors play against them is they will kick something silly, you know, maybe the Incinerate or the Immolate, right? And then they won't have Kick or Reflect Up for the Chaos Bolt. And this is the most important spell that you need to be stopping. If you can stop the Chaos Bolts and the Fears on their healers, you have su successfully shut down a Destruction Warlock. And you actually have a pretty good rotation for doing so as well, right? You have your Stun. Stormbolt, you have Kick, you have Spell Reflect and Overwatch, and you can sort of rotate those so they shouldn't really be getting too many Chaos Bolts unless you're getting kicked. Oh, sorry, unless they're faking you often. But we also have to think about the other aspect of Destruction Warlock, which is they still have the gate, right? Um, apparently, I can't use my gate here for some reason, so I'll pull my pick back and move. Um, and this gate will enable them to essentially break out of your spears. Maybe I can do it over here. No, it doesn't seem like I, I can use it in a city. This will enable them to break out of your spears and essentially kite you really effectively. So a lot of what warlocks will do if you're, if you're fighting them, right, is they will stand next to their gate and just tank your damage there. And what they'll do is they'll wait until you spear and then they'll take the gate which means your spear is completely ineffective and they're very, very far away when you have that mastery buff, avatar, uh, warbreaker, all this stuff, right? So you want to make sure that if you're looking at hitting the warlock, either try and drag him away from his gate or look for swaps with like a stormbolt spear when he's pretty far away from his gate too. Um, you also got to take note of the fact that the demonic gateway is actually a pretty big range to click it. Um, so even if they don't look like they can click it, a lot of the times if they spam it, they will get it off. So what should you be looking at kicking? Primarily, you should be looking at kicking Chaos Bolt, right? Um, the Incinerate and this type of damage is, is still going to hurt, but letting Chaos Bolts go off mean you're probably going to lose. 
The other thing to consider is Havoc, right? So they can mark a second target apart from you, right? If I, I show you here. So there's like a modeled boar and I can mark him with Havoc. So all my damage abilities like uh, incinerate, Cun Flag Incinerate will hit that target too, but also my Mortal Coil, which is sort of that disorient, will hit the other target as well, right? And to show you sort of what I mean by the gate, we cast the gateway. I can still use it un even up until here. You know, I'm standing pretty far away. So a lot of the times you'll spear someone around here and they'll be able to move in your spear in range of the gate. So try and make sure they're like at least this far away from the gate, ideally as far away as possible from the gate because they can't use their portal, right? Which is demonic circle out of your gate either, right? And demonic circle is a 30 second cooldown which lets them go back to a certain point. So you should track that as well. If you're swapping them, you want to ideally swap them when they have no demonic circle or they're far away from their gate, either or, right? And ideally both. <clears throat> the other things to consider are fear, right? So fear on you, you can berserk or rage it. Uh, I think a thing that I see a lot of warriors do badly is a lot of the times they'll like berserk or rage before the fear, which isn't bad if you're trying to stick on a target completely, but it also means you don't eat any of the DR. So when your Berserker Rage falls, maybe you're in a really, really clutch moment, you'll still eat a three second fear, which is not something you want to, oh, sorry, a six second fear because you never took the original uh, Berserker Rage fear. You completely immuned it, thus you weren't put on DR. I believe that's how that works. I might be wrong because that's from last season information at least. Um, the other thing, Shadow Fury, right? You probably want to kick Shadow Fury when they're setting up which is their big one and a half second stun on everybody in that target range, right? And you'll know a Warlock's going when they throw down this Infernal, right? This guy here, Summon Infernal. The Infernal does huge damage and generates more Soul Shards for them, which means they can get more Chaos Bolts out, right? So it's really scary when this guy's out and they've got Dark Soul up. Dark Soul's purgeable now, right? Um, but it is still a huge buff to them. It gives them 30% extra crit chance, and the crit chance directly, because Chaos Bolt always crits, just increases the damage of all the Chaos Bolts, right? So huge damage there coming out from them. The other thing that they might do is they might use Unending Resolve aggressively, right? Which means they can't be kicked. You won't be able to kick any of their spells. If you see that, it's probably a really good idea to line, or stun or even fear them if they're going to do unhealable damage to you or your teammates, right? It's really worth considering that. So ultimately, I think the hardest thing about Destruction Warlock is watching out for those um, massive spikes of damage. With Affliction Warlock, what you'll notice is they'll get these unstable afflictions out on your entire team, right? An unstable affliction means that essentially you can't be purged without a, a pretty considerable knockback to the Dispeller. So your paladin or your healer, sorry, <laughs> not all healers are paladins, um, but your, your healer won't be able to take a lot of different um, dispels off you, right? So if you get hodged with unstable affliction and vampiric touch, you won't be able to ever come out of that hodge unless you use your own trinket. So this is a really, really scary situation to be in and why a lot of new new worries and even more experienced worries, I get stuck and do bad things like this all the time, get uh, really messed up by Shadow Clay because you need pretty good awareness of where your healer is, whether you can live, um, all these different things. Because if you get hodged with uh, a Warlock that has Dark Soul and Mind Games on you, you're pretty much dead, right? That damage is very unhealable. And the main damage thing that comes out of Affliction Warlocks will be when they pop Dark Soul Misery, which increases their haste and therefore increases how often the, the dots tick, right? The other thing to think about is when you get Phantom Singularity on you as well, which deals extra damage as a dot. And, you know, you have this whole row of dots of UA, Cedar, uh, sorry, Phantom Singularity, Agony, Corruption, all this kind of stuff, right? and they'll just kite you with their legendary. I don't know if I can see legendaries on this yet. I won't be able to show you the legendary because I don't have it. I haven't leveled this guy up yet, right? Um, but the legendary is really, really powerful and super hard to deal with. Um, that's the one that slows you. I'm sure everyone's seen it before. Finally, the other thing to consider with Affliction Lock is this drain life, right? So when they stack up a target with enough agonies, sort of, I guess, about a minute into the game, they'll get 50 sacks of this inevitable demise, which means their drain life will hit all of you with that soul rot ability that Night Fae um, 
Warlock's run as well and hit all of you with a massive drain life. So you want to sort of have a stun or a kick ready to stop that drain life if you see it happening. If you let the full channel go off while they have Dark Soul up and Phantom Singularity and all their dots rolling, your whole team will start to melt. So you really need to look at this and shut it down as soon as possible. It's super, super important. And again, Affliction Warlock can play Mortal Coil, which is essentially the, the horrify effect which makes you run. They don't have Havoc, so they can't do that to two targets, but they can do that to one. Or they'll run Howl of Terror, which more Warlocks tend to run, where they can essentially run into your team and fear them like a Priest Fear, right? So overall, this huge amount of damage on your entire team is avoidable if you do respect their major cooldowns, mainly being Dark Soul Misery, right? and swapping onto them and trying to shut them down when, whenever they're trying to do their drain lives or set up their dots, right? You really need, if you're able to stop them getting UAs out on the team, um, that means that your healer has a bit of breathing room to dispel the other dots on you, right? So the corruptions and the, all these other smaller abilities. If he doesn't have any time to do that and there's a UA on him, you know, shadow play tends to, to want to swap to healers a lot with like a stun uh, where the, the healer has a UA and a mind games and a VT on him and those and he just melts, right? Finally, there's another thing to consider is Death Bolt. And you won't see this being used by many people, right? But if you do see this, you need to respect this a lot. Um, so Death Bolt essentially hits 40% of the total remaining damage of time abilities on your target. And what will happen with Death Bolt is they'll stack an entire target with dots, right? They'll get Power Infusion, they'll use Dark Soul, and they'll usually use like a Bop or something, right? And they'll throw this Death Bolt at you with 100% of all your abilities up, and you'll just get nuked, right? It'll hit you for like 30, 40k damage. If you see a Warlock chasing you with PI, Dark Soul, it's probably better to preemptively use defensive cooldowns there. Either try and fear and stop him from ever connecting and try to look at whatever immunities that your team can use so they can't get swapped onto with a death bolt, right? So really, really important to consider that because this will be a really big cooldown um, from them that can potentially completely one-shot you as well. So this sort of concludes this aspect of the Warlock video. Um, obviously, I, I'm unable to show all the Covenant abilities here. Um, generally, Warlocks will run the Night Fae with Soul Shape, right, and Soul Rot, um, and they'll sort of rotate those around too. I highly recommend looking at those. I'm going to go over all the Covenant abilities in a separate video, um, but, you know, for the purposes of how I wanted to do this video with, um, you know, all this stuff out, you know, it's really, really important for me to cover it. I think the final things with Affliction Warlock is looking at Dark Glare as well. This guy will essentially pump a whole bunch when they have dots on the entire team. And the Malefic Rupture, right, which makes all the dots they have out erupt on all the targets around you. So if you leave an Affliction Warlock sitting in enemy lines while you're getting kited or you're running away, and he's spamming Malefic Ruptures on you, with the Dark Glare out, that's why your team is melting. If there's ever any idea when you don't understand how a, a Warlock's doing so much damage, that's the reason why, right? So, hopefully, um, obviously I'm not a Warlock main, I'm not a Shadow Priest main, there's probably people in here who play those classes, so please just add any other information that you think is relevant. Um, if you are a warrior that has, you know, experienced something against these classes that I haven't covered, um, you know, I try and do these as extensively as possible, but obviously I'm going to miss things. So please chuck those in the comments too. Um, it's super, super appreciated. Hopefully this video is useful to you. I think a lot of people struggle with SPs and Aflocs, even though Warriors are sort of naturally their counter. And you can sort of understand, looking at this kit, why Warriors can do so well. There's so many stops, there's so many kicks that you can do to these guys. You just have to not let them run rampant, right? Okay, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you like the content, please consider subscribing um, and following the Twitch if you want to watch the games live. All right, peace, guys.